Good evening. This is Mary uh, Kay DeCorsi. I'm the chair of the Auburn Public Library Board of Trustees, and I'm calling our meeting to order at 6.30 on Wednesday, September 6, 2023. This is an open meeting of the Auburn Public um, Library Board of Trustees. It's being recorded at Auburn, uh, I'm sorry, it's being recorded at the uh, Auburn Public Library in the Merriam Room, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, which suspends the requirement of open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location due to a COVID-19 virus. Please note that this meeting is being recorded by the Auburn Cable Vision. Is anyone else recording this meeting? No. The agenda of this meeting was posted on uh, Auburn Town website on Thursday, August 31st, 2023. Uh, Permit me to confirm that members of this body and persons anticipated on our agenda are present. Members, when I call your name, uh, please respond in the affirmative. Matt Toth. Present. Erica Breesacker. Present. Vera Corain. Steve Redding. Present. And I am present, Mary Kay DeCourcy. Town employees participating, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Molly Hulser. Present. Thank you. All right, so we are calling the meeting to order. The first uh, um, item on the agenda is to review the first set of minutes, where, which were from May 3rd. May to, 31st. I'm, I'm sorry, May 3rd. The first ones were the ones that John, yeah. do you remember? Okay. So I just want to make a distinction. The only change, we have the initial minutes, which uh, my name had a small C in the beginning. I just asked John to just change it. It's Mary DeCourcy with a hard C sound. Um, and I also asked him to just adjust Dr. Collins because she is an EDD rather than Miss Collins. Uh, and Matt suggested uh, the following changes. Um, in, do you want to read it or would you want me to read it? It's in se it's it section right. three, you just have it if you yeah. want, or I can read All it. Right. It's, in, it's item three of the May 3rd, yeah. 23 meeting. Remove the sentence in item three beginning with Ms. Collins provided the report orally and replace it with the following information. Ms. Collins began to read the first update of the APL strategic plan, a 12-page single-spaced report, and when asked to distribute copies, gave a requested one to a BOT member, then continued reading the material. After three pages were read, the BOT chair asked how many pages were in the report, and after being told, she asked Ms. Collins to summarize the report, report since reading the report would be onerous. Ms. Collins vehemently objected to the request would not distribute copies to other BOT members and left the meeting. Okay. And that was an adjustment, just that was a, omitted. But I just want to point out what was written is Dr. Collins, again, not Ms. Collins, so that I agree with everything that Matt read. Does anybody have any other changes they want to make or any objections to the changes that Matt and I suggested? Mary, I, I think we have one. We probably have to wait for Vera because Eric was not at I that meeting, so, so she couldn't vote. So okay. we probably have to wait until she gets So here. I will table this for minutes in case Ms. Corain comes. If not, we'll table it for the next meeting. Is that fair? Yeah, I'll Very good. Try then, to reach her. then we're going to present the minutes from May 31st as well. Um, can I ask everybody to review the minutes that Mr. Redding has provided for us? Does everybody have a copy or do you need a copy? Okay. Thank you, Matt. There you are. Right
Do I have a motion to accept the May 31st, 2023 minutes? Approved. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Vera. Just going to do a roll call very quickly. I accept the minutes. Mayor Kate Corsi. Uh, Vera says yes. Uh, Steve Redding? Uh, approved. Yeah, I. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Erica Bresacker. Abstain. I wasn't okay. here. That's correct. Thank you so much. We're going to move to back to the May 3rd meeting minutes. And again, the only changes with spelling of my name, um, the honorific of Dr. Collins versus Miss Collins, and just paragraph three, Matt, provided an edit. Um, you, did you see that edit already, Yara? Yeah. Okay. Looks good. Uh -huh. I read fast. It looks good. No, I don't mean, I meant yeah. the one that, uh, that you set up. This is the edit okay. to the May 3rd minutes. Oh, okay. So it's the same thing that's in bold? Yeah. Okay, great. I support you this, this edit. <laughs> okay. You had it already. Okay. Then, yeah. then, then may I have a motion to accept the May 3rd um, edited version of the minutes? So moved. That is Vera Corain. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Matt Toth. Just going to do a roll call. Uh, Mary Corsi, yes. Um, Steve Redding? Yes. And Erica, I know you're staying here. Very good. Thank you all. <clears throat> We're going to move to the next part of the minutes, which are, I'm sorry, which are the, uh, the agenda, excuse me, which is the director's report and the expenditures. Uh, Molly, did you want to present that information? Uh, we do not have a director's report at this time. Oh, that's right. Uh, the director did pass along the uh, expenditures report okay. by email. Very good. Does the, has everybody received that? I made a copy of both the ARIS report and the, um, I have the expenditures right here, can you look at these? And I made copies of the ARIS report, I four and one. It's going to be real fancy. <laughs> did, it, did, did, did you get a chance to see those? I saw it online, yeah. Okay, great. I don't think I did. Here we go. Thank so you. Will we take a minute and look at those? Um, and if you have any questions, Molly, you'll be able to help us. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate you. Do you want? Do you yeah, want? I just said, I was on for 29th of August. Yeah. The Kevin Gardner, which program is that? This is the Stonewall oh, program. Yeah. Right. Then on August 22nd, I, I know that uh, that must have been something to do with the boilers that. Uh, ace temperature 925. I believe so, yeah. yeah um, and Julie Stepanek is, is, is that a program? Yeah. Yep, that was the ukulele program. And I saw CW Mars for 29,000. That's pretty good. And Barbara Jordan for 480. That is the STEM uh, Young Scientists program. Um, I think the rest of them. Were all programs, I think. Playaway products. What? What are those? That for five thousand or six thousand? I believe those are the um, wonder books. So they're the books that have a built-in audio player. Their children's books. I knew they had to be some kind of a product probably for the children's room, but I thought 6,000 at least to ask. So, and I think on May 30th, all those things, um, Davis, Derry, and Southwick in New England, those must all be uh, passes. Yeah. There was just one other one I was unfamiliar with. PASIC, DH Pace Company, $600. That is the uh, door, the front uh, door repair. We're going to have to come back, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it working now? It's, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's, it's got
Okay. So do we need to go to a clear with that? No. Okay. So in our last meeting, I know Erica, you weren't with us. Last meeting was in May. We talked about organizing our meetings into like topics that people mm -hmm. really want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to give everybody the chance to either send me topics or if there's things you want to cover. We have two meetings before we break in November. We have uh, October 3rd, which is Wednesday, the first Wednesday, November 1st. Then we break until February. We have a February 7th meeting, March 6th, and then we have two more before we reorganize. But I wanted to be able to give members a chance to talk about any topics that you want to focus on on different um, meeting dates. I, I haven't really thought much about that issue, and the reason is uh, we've, got, we've got some things to do, I know. There's questions we got to answer. I don't know if we're going to get those answered or not tonight. Okay. But after maybe some of those answers, maybe some of the things will come to mind. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't know about anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so, given the way the meeting where the strategic plan was reported on went, I'm thinking that it would be good to develop a sort of a template, make it easier to report on. I've seen a couple of different ones out there. So, we're around online. So if we can meet to, to kind of discuss maybe a simplified and streamlined way that makes it easier to do the reporting and makes it easier for us to receive the information. And, and I don't think the whole thing has to be reported on in broad form, it could be more targeted. So I would like to do that. Also, if the open meeting law continues to be a point of, of confusion or stress, then I would like for there to be a meeting where we discuss that. And, because it seems like there's a lot of confusion, like what is quorum, what we can and can't talk about, just so that we can level set, everybody is operating with the same understanding, which there is only one, because it's the open meeting law, they have rules. So that might make it a lot easier. Now, are you suggesting that for a topic of a meeting or a subcommittee? Uh, or a training? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think we need a subcommittee on the open meeting mm -hmm. because that is a thing that mm -hmm. exists in the exactly. world. Yeah. Um, I am disinclined to do a training. If anybody wants to do a training, by all means, have at it. But yeah. I, we can do. I can do a brief overview. There are certainly trainings available online, right. not provided by the state. Right. Just you know, like questions like, "What is quorum?" We're down one, right? And although officially the town has told us that quorum is four, in fact, it's three. Yeah. It's still correct. You know, so do you want to cover that on October third? Yeah, and just and be open to <laughs> questions from, from all of us in terms of the strategic plan template. What are you thinking? Are you thinking we discuss that at our October third meeting and construct it? Or are you thinking some sort of a, 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 a subcommittee to be able to to create it? What are you thinking? Anybody have any feelings or opinions? I mean, I'm I'm I can either grab a few examples, or we could do a subcommittee and see if we develop something we like. Pleasure to the board. I'll, I'll uh, work with you on the template. Rock on. That would yeah. be awesome. Okay. Awesome. Subcommittee. Awesome. And we, I have to be honest with you, I was dying to hear last spring about ideas that you have, uh, Steve, in terms of getting more input from our community about what they need, what they're interested in, and I was dying to find out, and I heard yeah. that you want, were thinking about some coffee hours, and but I was hoping that you could talk about that a little bit, and that maybe we could create a space in our meetings to talk about that. That'd be wonderful. Uh, are you talking about like like a focus topic, like what we're? Yeah, I'm thinking about. It, 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 I want to hear from you. If it's something that you want to do a presentation about, or if you want a piece of every meeting, just to say report out on this is what we decide. This is what I learned. This is this was the discussion. I don't know. I want to leave that up to you. I would rather start with a focus topic. Okay. It shouldn't, shouldn't take a whole meeting. Yeah. But, okay. Um, just to lay out some of the. Uh, um, some of the ideas and strategies that I've come into contact with in my okay. professional life okay. and see if they if, if they resonate with people and, and if we want to take them and, and run with them. Okay. You know, something like that. And then after that we can, you know, we can schedule time during meetings to, you know, check in. And that sounds great. That kind of 
How do you feel about we have, so we're talking about open meeting law, presentation, and maybe presenting a template on October 3rd. Do you want to sort of start on that date? Is sure. it? No, okay. let's do it on, on November 1st. Do, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready? Because we don't want to crowd the meetings too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, the open meeting law, I, I don't know where I saw it, but I, I went through a uh, training on that. that Vera's talked about that before. Mm -hmm. That was really good, uh, you know, self-directed kind of training. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll at least pass that. It's figure out what it was. That would be awesome. It was either a from up, MLA oh, okay. or American Library Association. It's from one of those groups. And um, must have been, you know, it's from Massachusetts. But it was really a good open meeting. And I actually talked about it with Rachel in the clerk's office. Mm -hmm because I thought it was actually better than the materials that we had had at a previous time to review. Okay. So it does, it, it is helpful. I would like that. I would really like that because yeah, I know it, and it's not, it's not just us. I've heard other people mm -hmm. with a, with a little bit of consternation around like, we can't talk about this. And I'm like, well, one, there's only two of you, two, nobody's deliberating. So, right. you know, right. right. Yeah. Misinformation. There, there are a lot of good videos online. Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, I know I, I watched a couple from a, um, a lawyer's office uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that talked and, and they come up with anecdotes like that that helps me to, to understand the stuff mm -hmm. like oh th there was this one case of you know and then they go into this thing and it helps you understand the actual nuts and bolts of the thing mm -hmm. so I, I recommend that as well excellent all info welcome <laughs> sounds great Anything I, else you want well, to add? Well, I did have a topic that's going to probably take a um, a um, subcommittee. Okay. But it is that to take a look at the conversation that we had about the charter two years ago. I agree with you. Um, and I, I, what I've noticed is in some other communities where there is a town manager with a similar authority that our town manager has, mm -hmm. And they do things quite differently with the library. And I, I think it might be interesting to take a look at the material. Uh, two or three people that have not, were not here when we had that first conversation that we met with the um, uh, Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. And actually, just remember the Board of Selectmen meeting, I can probably bring that up. Chris, do you, oh, he's going you know they're are, they're on video. Oh, they're, That's, yes, for the past they're, couple of years. Yes, sir. Okay. They're at, they're on YouTube. I'll try to find that, and I don't know who'd be interested in taking a look at that. But mm -hmm. I uh, can do that. Eric, yeah. yeah. I was here for that conversation. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you were. Oh yeah. Yes, you were. <laughs> yeah. So were you thinking, just in the spirit of just organizing our meeting, do you want to shoot for that on February seventh, which would be our first meeting reconvening after the new year? Or you did, were you thinking earlier? It's February 7th, so it's all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? Erica, Vera, are you interested in that? I, I am a policy geek, of course I'm interested yeah. in that. <laughs> that. That's what I was thinking. That's my happy place. Yeah. And you know something, since I was on the last subcommittee, I'd like to participate as well. So it's a committee of the whole. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't matter, you, you know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have to do minutes. So, yeah. True. Even for the yeah. subcommittees, yep. even though there's not a quorum, right. uh, finally that. Well, and it's not for a deliberation. Got clarified. So. That's right. That's right. Okay. Anything else before we move on? We no. 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 Sorry. It just to be back on yep. Steve's idea and what you suggested about creating some space for feedback, right? Like if you have your stuff that you envisioned and that you want to talk about and i'm also dying to hear about it but as we kind of move through the online atmosphere or run into other people we get additional feedback from people like people might post on facebook i really wish the library offered x i really wish our library did y so i think as we come in contact with this feedback it would be helpful to bring it back to the group mm -hmm. we don't have to name names we don't have to be weird and creepy but we can discuss these are themes that are bubbling up through the community yep. so let's just put it out there uh, you know, it makes the library aware of it, so you can take it under advisement, and we're aware of what the community is giving back to us. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. 
so we're moving on to the next item. We had uh, Matt provided questions. He had APL BOT questions about the APL collective bargaining agreement. Um, so my question, Matt, do you want me to turn it over to you? The use of certain terms I mentioned in the agenda. We have to table that. Oh, we have to table that? We have to table that to the follow to next meeting. Okay. Because Dory wants to come in and answer some of those questions. Okay. So she she sent an email. Okay. That, that I didn't see, could, obviously. It's okay. I didn't see it for a day and a half. So she asked if we could table this. We can keep it, but not this meeting. Okay. Next meeting. Okay. Um, Thank sure, you. I would I'd like to just clarify the questions that I had. I, I don't know if anyone else had any, but I, the question, the three one, three questions I had. Where in the agreement would be identified or interpreted to deny the APL BOT members from using words like licensed librarians, MSL, children's librarian, technology specialist, or other professional positions that might be consistent with Commonwealth libraries? <laughs> Where in the agreement would it be identified or interpreted to deny the APL BOT members from using the word volunteers or any other specific language consistent with positions in the Commonwealth Library at our Board of Trustee meetings? And where in the agreement or in the contract would it be identified or interpreted to deny APL board members from knowing who has resigned or been hired at the Auburn Public Library? I don't know if others have other questions mm -hmm. that they'd like to add to that, okay. but I I think the, the it is outrageous to think of freedom of speech mm -hmm. being denied to the Auburn Public Library Board of Trustees mm -hmm. in some way that I can't imagine where it, I, I've looked through that agreement. Mm -hmm. I can't find anything in that agreement that would bind the Auburn Public Library Board of Trustees in any way. I, it, it's not our agreement. Right. It's not. It's not meant. It's meant to protect the employees that yes. fall under the union. That's it's correct. Meant to you know safeguard their stuff. I think that's why Dory wanted to talk about it. But I think it would actually be excellent to definitely make note of all of those questions, give yep. it to her in advance, Agreed. so that we can reread them and have a full discussion. Yeah, absolutely. And anything else we come up with, because I think it's a fair question, right? Yeah. And yeah. and we know the contract is. Wait, I'm, I'm a big union supporter, so it's, all, yeah. so it's all good, but it's fair that we should, you know, the reason we requested it in the first place was mm -hmm. to avoid tripping over it as yeah. we yeah. did ask certain things, since yeah. we were told we were tripping over it. Mm -hmm. So more information is better. Yeah. Um, Vera, just, just for the notes, yeah. um, uh, who is Dory and what is her position? <laughs> Sorry. Dory is the new assistant town manager, and her oh, last okay. name is, help me please, Dory. Okay, no, I'm going to cheat. We're going to get her help. email. I don't. <laughs> and I apologize to the board. I did not check my personal email, so I did not see that she sent us an email. No, you're totally good. I forgot to. I, v e c c h i o. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. See, see how I avoided mispronouncing it because <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> but in, do that. in support of the question that you just started, does anyone want to add questions? And I'll make note of it. Steve will make note of it, and I will I will share those with Dory. Any questions about the contract? I don't have a question about the contract because okay. I read these all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a chapter president of a union. Um, but it, my my main question is kind of contextual: is why are there the questions I missed a year being on the board? So I'm not sure why the CBA is part of the discussion. So this might just be catching me up, um, but just to get a sense of why are there questions about the role of the BOT vis-a-vis -vis the CBA versus and, and, and relating to the library. And that's all, you know, especially just because just so I know. <laughs> so uh, let me start and then I'll let you expound sure. if you don't mind. So very good question. Very good question. And out of context, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah, I was just like, so CBA. going back to my, my earliest recollection was in 2020, when we would just ask questions about a children's librarian or certain roles, like can't we use volunteers? There was, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of objection to us even talking about it. So Matt's- uh, You mean certain roles in the library? Certain roles in the library and, we, and, and what had come up, and it was when we were on Zoom prior to meeting live again, but also in most meetings, if we brought up a question 
The response was, that's a violation of the collective bargaining agreement. We, we can't talk about that. You're, you know, there was a lot of contentious, to be honest, contentious um, uh, dialogue. And so as a result, we, what we, uh, Vera and I met with the town manager and the assistant town manager. We welcome that uh, Molly, Molly is, is representing. But we just wanted to make sure there's freedom of speech in our meetings and we don't want to violate anyone's contract. So we had a discussion about it. I'm glad to hear that Dory wants to come to, um, uh, to, the, meeting. to the next meeting yeah. to answer questions, but I think it's fair game. Like, I don't want to elongate a discussion about this, but I do right. am interested in if there are other questions, having read the contract that we might add to the agenda minutes on the next meeting. Okay. The only thing I would add, uh, Erica, is that it was during the strategic plan Mm -hmm. And we tried to use language that was consistent with other libraries, and we were told that those were intimidating mm -hmm. to raise the question about certain okay. positions. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, and I know that it was not correct, I was forced into, I was chaired then, I was forced into a conversation with the union rep, okay. uh, and I was told how awful we all were by talking about any of these things like children's librarians mm -hmm. or other positions at the library and it got to the point where um, in with the town manager I simply said okay fine we're just not gonna do it anymore I think it's stupid but we're not doing it mm -hmm. and then um, I forget how it came up more recently that uh, why is it that we can't use language here it's just preposterous mm -hmm. yeah, like for example I would because Last year I was all, I'm new. So I would just say, well, what about the librarians at the desk? And, and I would be corrected, they're not librarians, but also we can't call them librarians. And so for me, it was really a quest in, if there are lines, we don't want to cross those sure. lines. Mm -hmm. Sure. And if there is simply confusion about lines, it's mm -hmm. much better to clarify that. So mm -hmm. that much like the open meeting law, we can just start with an understanding of we, we can say X, we, we can't say Y, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Everybody's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. staffing things so um, people like me will often misspeak <laughs> and I will add that my question specific that were that created some contention I want to know what in, in the spirit of a growth model how are professional staff being supported through professional development so that was a question that I and this was over zoom I am very interested as an educator I know that I need to climb the steps and the ladders or whatever we call it I have to have my master's, I have to have so many points or whatever. So those were my questions, specific to our staff given the professional development that they need in order to advance. So, and that was, again, that was contentious. We have not, so I'm gonna support 100%. If anybody has any more questions, I wanna add them to the minutes so that we can make sure we get those to Dory. But if not, I think we need to move on to the next yeah, item. Any, anything, uh, Steve? Um. I have one that sort of hinges on something I said one one time, sort of uh, half half serious, half not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, can we, um, you know, we as as board members, bake a tin of muffins for for the staff in appreciation? Yeah. And is there something in the collective bargaining agreement that doesn't allow us to do that? Because the uh, the response that that I got was, oh, we're not sure about that. We have to check. Yeah, okay. And it, are, are there any, because, you know, I, I think that's a visible sign of support for the that's library, right. 100%. you know, yeah. and in fact, I saw that happen. I was at the firehouse. I, I, I was over here, the fire department. A family came in with a cake for the firemen in appreciation of, you know, them coming out to, to you know, um, check a, what, whatever at their house, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was just such a nice community thing, but um, I was surprised kind of at the at the uh, response. Yeah, the pushback on that. So we used to do those things. Yeah. We used to do that in uh, the early years, uh, until the last seven years. We did do things like that. We brought in plants occasionally yeah. for certain days. We brought in food at different times, mm -hmm. and uh, that all stopped. Yeah. So, so and I don't see why we can't. I mean. Because we appreciate them. Well, yeah, it's we possible, but I suppose yeah. uh, a library director could say that you can't do that. Right. 
Uh, yeah, we could say. I, I have an official answer, though. Oh, you do? I, I okay. do. I love it. I got I the love official it. answer. We can officially bring treats. Right. And they do not have to be store bought. Like, if any of y'all get skewed by that, please let us know. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we can show our appreciation. We can bring baked goods. There's no rule. There is no Board of Health rule against it. Thank so, you for researching that. Okay, that's what we do. Thank you. Welcome. I really do. That, that was the first thing I said about defining out. I was like, this will not continue. There must be treats. <laughs> <laughs> there must be treats. We should not. And we used to do that at every board of trustees meeting. We had coffee set up and somebody brought something every meeting. It was, a, it was It's nice. It's, it's a community yeah. building. Okay, I want to go to the next. Is everybody all set with that before? So, so Matt, you brought up another piece, which it's, uh, it's B under, under five. The town manager prepares schools for the library director and has shared them with the BOT. It has been past practice that the APL BOT would recommend goals to the town manager who could add them to the goals developed by the town manager for the director. Please have any goals that you would like to discuss available for 9-6. This was a note from you. Uh, did you want to talk about that at all? Yes. Or does anybody want to? Uh, go ahead. I'll let you start. I don't know. But anybody else bring some things? Okay. Here's what I brought. Okay. Um, Thank you. These are some of the goals that I hope we can at least discuss about sending to Ed. We do not have the authority to give any goals to the director except through the town manager. Uh, the first would be to hire a librarian, MSL and Commonwealth certified as the assistant director of the Auburn Public Library by February 1. 2024 and a children's library and MSL and Commonwealth certified by May 1, 2024. Those are both things that we've talked a lot about uh, over the past several years and especially with strategic plan. And then work with whatever resources are available to return to a full staff at the APL by May 1, 2024. We didn't talk about the Ares report tonight, but I have a lot of questions about that and the number of vacancies that we have and have had for a while. Then three, offer technology classes and other adult programs, at least 30, with ass assessed measurable outcomes, aside from the craft offerings by May 1st, 2024. The monthly BOT meetings director's report sent the Friday or Monday before the meeting should include a completed database assessment of at least one program each week identifying the goals of the program and the assessment of the measurable outcomes. Two, provide monthly 12 data-based assessments of the measurable outcomes from at least one of the APL strategic plan goals. Provide monthly 12 updates on the work being done on at least one of the APL strategic plan goals. Uh, I don't know what you think about some of those or all of them or none of them, or if you had changes you'd want to make on that or things you'd want to eliminate, but that's very what I... I, I appreciate them. I can support them. I think the, the question is whether our body is, is um, whether we are allowed to, well, we're allowed to make, make suggestions to the town manager. Correct. The question is whether the town manager is open to that, and that will be something that we, I think, I think when Dory comes, I'm, I just wrote down a number of things that I'll have her just address with us um, in our next meeting, October 3rd. Julie did provide us with the goals mm -hmm. that she had, mm -hmm. and then we could also offer her goals and whether she would, I, I don't think we ever heard how those were done or not done, mm -hmm. but we never had any measurable way to see whether they were done or not. Mm -hmm. So this at least provides some measurable outcomes. And I think on the director's report, because that's supposed to be to the Board of Trustees, mm -hmm. this should be pretty easy to implement. Right. Right. Yeah, I think it's reasonable to say in the monthly report we would like to get information about X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. I, hopefully it's not in any way objectionable, yeah. since, mm -hmm. I mean, theoretically as a public body, it should all be public information anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to add anything? Um, the goal three here, I, I, I like that, but I'd like to um, maybe broaden it and talk about adult and youth programs. Yes. Youth not being children's mm -hmm. programs, yeah. 
but being young adults, right. because one of, one of the things that I've noticed mm -hmm. is that, you know, there, there's, there, there's children and there's seniors who use the library a lot, but we, we, we have this gap in between that, uh, you know, kids drop off and uh, adults have, you know, get busy and, and, and do that kind of thing. So stuff that, that, that they can do um, to, to, to get these age groups back into the library mm -hmm. and to make the library valuable for, for them. Mm -hmm. So something like that, just broaden it out. I totally agree. I, I know that's a lot of work and I go to some of the meetings, uh, the statewide meetings, mm -hmm. and people have been able to bring in young adults, but it is a lot of work. It is, yeah. It's, it's just not a simple group to have access to, yeah. but I sure agree with you on that. Yeah. So well, we, I'd be happy to and young adult and other adult programs. Yeah. yeah. I know in our strategic plan, Steve, we did focus groups, but I think there's a real need for needs assessments. And that's why I was so interested when you talked about getting, you know, getting feedback from the community, because I know that in order to understand the trajectory of the needs that we have in any body that includes knowledge, knowledge base, we have to know what people are interested in. That's right. And we also have to know our de demographics. Are we meeting the demographic needs? You referenced two demographics, but you're right. There's a big gap in terms of adolescence. And I'm very curious when I go around to other libraries, um, what they're doing to create a safe space for teens. And if you get a chance, Lester does some pretty cool things. It has right up the road. They have a teenage area, they set up games, they create a space, they're like high, almost like you go into a restaurant, the high tables with the, with the, you know, it's just feels like a cool space. Do I know how many teenagers act, access that? No, but I'll tell you what, it looks very impressive and thoughtful. Yeah. It looks like people who uh, run that library really think about creating a space that would attract a group versus creating a sterile space that would not attract that, that particular demographic. So I love that. Mm -hmm. And we talked, when I first interviewed, I talked a lot about needs assessments because I'm so interested in feedback. Like, are we doing the right thing or are we completely off? Yeah. So yes, I support Steve's uh, position 100% to broaden that number three to include youth. I agree. Anybody want to add anything else? I would just ask for under point four, mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, bullet point, complete a database assessment of at least one program each week. Yes, because that's cool. Yeah. Identifying goals of program and assessment of measurable outcomes. I'm confused. Um, <laughs> like, because if we're, because if the library offers a program, right, mm -hmm. for, uh, I don't know for computer for a computer thing or for music appreciation or for finances for adults right we want to get people in we want to get people engaged but what other what other measurable outcomes are we hoping for beyond engagement so that well now it's interesting I, I noticed in some of the programs that you listed Molly um, they have three or four goals oh. that are listed right in each of those programs I don't know if that's true for every program but okay. at least that I noticed that they were there. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of evaluating whether those goals have been achieved or not with simple questions. Mm -hmm. Fair. Mm -hmm. This is why I leave without confused. Okay. <laughs> Excellent question, though. Excellent question. Any other questions from the board? Or any desire to broaden or lessen any of the points? No? Can we vote on you? transmitting this to the town manager. Do we need to? I think, I think probably. Yeah. Okay. Let's it do really it. is a, should be a whole board vote. All right, there. so let's do it. Do I have a motion for me to pass this on to the town manager? I so move. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Just gonna do a quick roll call on the vote. Matt Toth? Yes. Erica said yes. Vera? Yes. Steve said yes. Mary's yes. I will present this as well. I have items already that I'm making note. I'll send this to you, Mary. If yeah. You want that separate. No, this is perfect. What I'll do, I'll just shoot out an email tonight after this meeting, and I just I will apologize that I did not I did not read my personal email, so I did not see an email from Glory, and I'm so happy that she's willing to join us. Um, if we're done with that bullet item, 
The next one was uh, Matt uh, submitted it that we need to add the approved collection policy onto the website. That was a request. Do you want to talk about that? Um, can I ask Molly why that is done? Do you know? Um, I will have to uh, check with Gene about that, but okay. I, I believe that is a, a possibility. Okay. Um, okay. Th we did approve this at our last meeting. That's correct. Um, the only thing that we that was a little bit different was the work that Vera did on the with your assistance uh -huh. with you yeah and the reconsideration yeah oh here it is we made it pretty here yeah <laughs> let me just pass this mm -hmm. um, Janet added a few added the logo on the top and the rest of it is what um, Vera worked for the subcommittee so it's all all that material See, we is, is here we have enough okay. yeah we have enough. oh did you get one yes okay great perfect so uh, I we agreed on this we added the things uh, that we talked about at that meeting mm -hmm. and it's on both pages mm -hmm. And the collection development policy. Now, I did email Jean uh, a copy and told her that it had been approved. What I did notice tonight was that in two places there was a, a mark, a strike through mm -hmm. that shouldn't have been there. I'm going to fix that and I'll send that uh, probably tomorrow. That sounds good. It, um, can I just ask, Molly, you might know. I don't know for the library website. Do you guys manage the library website, or does the town do the library website? Um, our our own website, AuburnLibrary.org. We do manage that internally. Okay. There is also the town library piece on there. Good but yes, yeah, so officially, we now have a collections policy. And go us, <laughs> yeah. big big achievement. So I had the opportunity, just this, this interesting piece, I had the opportunity, someone in the community reached out to me with what she perceived to be an objectionable book. And she didn't have the title right, so I had to look it up. She said, it's called Coach, and she said, it's something that is so, not appropriate for young people, and I want you to check it out. So I, it's actually, the title is, is called um, Lawn Boy. So I ordered the book. It's, all, it's Lawn Boy by um, Evison, this is his last name, uh, Jonathan Evison, and then there's another uh, Lawn Boy by Gary Paulson, the children's author. So I just wrote a note. I am going to test this. I'm going to read Lawn Boy, and I'm going to you know, utilize this sheet, and I just want to do a quick presentation at the next meeting, just because I think it's useful if somebody has an objection, but it's also important to investigate whether or not there's something objectionable. Her position was very different from what the book actually is, so I don't want to speak on anything more than that other than I want to examine it and then be able to utilize this piece and practice it and see how that works for our next meeting, if that's okay with the board. Uh, the next question we had, if anybody doesn't have anything else, Matt, you wanted to talk about updating the BOT members on the website. Yeah, I don't know why they haven't been updated since the election in May. And Molly, do you have any idea about that? Um, I will um, check in with Jean about that. Okay, great. Uh, because again, uh, Steve was elected in May, and Erica was elected. Uh, Erica was appointed or elected. We elected. actually wrote you in. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, but also recently, no interview John, this time. <laughs> uh, John um, Danilowitz stepped down. So I think that's a really valid point. It should be updated. And it, I think it should be updated if we could with uh, contact information, whether that's email or telephone. I, I don't know if the board is open to that. I would like, I've talked about in the past, having, if you have Mary DeCourcy and you actually have an email address, if somebody wanted to reach out to me or Steve or Vera or Erica or Matt, um, I, I, we've talked about it in the past, but there was, I think there was discomfort with it when we talked about it before. Would it be possible to have town emails as trustees yes. I mean that's the main concern I would have from a yeah. privacy standpoint yes, and absolutely. and so I think some of that reticence would go away that's right certainly don't want my phone number spread everywhere no, no, but if there's no. a town email that would totally make yeah. sense and yeah. then it's a lot easier for people to get a hold of us and 
it's very clear what that role is. Very good. Yeah, I'm, I'm total agreement. And that was a point that I brought up, but I think a lot of people felt that way, that they didn't want their name or their, their telephone number posted. Well, we're talking about that. Um, I wonder if it would be beneficial to also have a general email that goes to one of the Board of Trustees or all of us or however, mm -hmm. like feedback at auburn.gov or BOT feedback at auburn.gov so that if anybody wants to give, you know, feedback about the library but doesn't, is, feels awkward picking one of us to contact, doesn't know where else to find us, and doesn't want to mm -hmm. come to the library staff because they value the good relationship with the library staff, giving them a place where they can mm -hmm. give some feedback that we can then bring back and discuss and say, it, it, uh, from an anonymous perspective, mm -hmm. somebody, a constituent has an issue mm -hmm. that we should think about. Mm -hmm. And we would just bring the issue without any specific, yeah. you know, just the specific issue to the board for discussion. Yeah. How does everybody feel about that? I think that makes sense, and it yeah. kind of yeah. seems common. Mm -hmm. Like to have a central email for the yeah. like office, it. and like with the lack of an office, but I like it. I like. I even like the the, the title <laughs> feedback at Auburn.gov. <laughs> I will present that in my email tonight to Dory and to Ed. That's a great idea. Great yeah. idea. Yeah, and actually, I. That must refer it that way with having a calendar okay. for all of us. Sort and, of a, yeah. and I'll see it. Totally you know, great. If anybody really wants it, then I just Google and can find everything they want, yeah. including a cell phone number. So, yeah, you yeah. know, if yeah. somebody's really anxious to only talk to a yeah. certain person. Right, right. But so the other way. I like this better. Yeah. Okay. I like yeah. this better because it would be something that we would have as a as a body, and then we could just bring them up, bring up points and that's the what discussion. We have, that's what we have for the Auburn Cultural Council. We've got right. one central email. Great. Everything comes in there. Right. And it's 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 a great way to just you know make sure that everybody sees everything. Okay. I like that. I like it too. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, so again, I, I was thinking of you, Steve. At the last F, the F message was methods. So, do you want to just like talk about just a couple of ideas that you have, just so we can walk away from this meeting and think of how we engage people, the methods? Vera told me one that you were thinking about having a open coffee, like a, a BOT coffee Saturday or something. And yeah. I was very interested in that. So I wanted let, to let, see. Let me let me tell you yeah. where it came from. Yep. Is uh, I used to live in uh, in Newton, and um, I had this favorite coffee place that I went to there. And uh, it wasn't actually until I moved out of Newton to, to Waltham that I kept on going to that coffee place. And the new uh, um, representative, uh, the um, congressional representative, Austrinkloss, mm -hmm. uh, Jay Austrinkloss, mm -hmm. he set up a coffee corner, and he was there uh, one Saturday every month for like you know four or five hours. Anybody could sit down with him. He had like a you know a little box of donuts you know to share, and you could sit down and you know harangue him about whatever. And I thought, what a great you know uh, visibility tool that is, and you know a way to get get sort of uh, um, you know some some good, uh, not statistical mm -hmm. information, mm -hmm. but but anecdotal, anecdotal. and yeah. and and real talk about mm -hmm. about the library. Mm -hmm. And it's also a, um, an opportunity for people to ask, what does this board of trustees do anyway? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that kind of thing. And it's, it's a way to give out information. Right. Um, and then, okay. you know, we could bring that back to uh, these meetings right. as, as sort of, you know, a customer satisfaction kind of thing. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I actually was so interested in it that I have a favorite coffee shop in town here. And I asked the owner if she would be open to that. She said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And she said, a lot of people that are running for office, they utilize that space. And we often meet up for coffee um, there. But yeah, that's a great idea. How, does, how do people feel about Sounds that? Sounds good. I like it too. Yeah. Maybe we could rotate. Exactly. People. I love that. I love that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you for indulging and, and me. And there will be there will be more in subsequent meetings. <laughs> I feel like I feel like in past meetings you didn't get a word in yeah. advice, so I'm dying to hear yeah. it, where you're coming yeah. from on a lot of issues. So thank you so much. Um, so that is all I had. Other than we have uh, our next meeting is scheduled for October 4th, 2023, here in the Marion Room at 6:30. The items that we talked about covering that during that time is some. Op um, Open meeting law, you know, question and answer, and you're going to take the lead on that. Um, the strategic plan template, um, where that's another thing, Vera, that sounds like you and, and Steve wanted to take a crack at that. 
As far as uh, the collections policy, I just would love to be able to sample this idea and see how you actually use it. If you do object or if someone objects to a material, how you utilize that. And then finally, um, we will have, I will ask Dor Dory if she can come and speak to our questions about the collective bargaining agreement. And I just want to just compliment everybody. I love this idea of a general bank that we can have people email questions, concerns, ideas to us, and that we would be open to those and bring them forward to the board. Does anybody have anything else before we yes. adjourn? Yes, sir. The, the Harris report, we haven't done anything with that tonight. Okay. Um, and probably have to check with Gina and stuff okay. from that anyway. But one of, one of the questions I would like to see is comparative data for the last five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where we have these there's so much, I think so much about vacancies and positions and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I have marks on a lot of the places, but if we could just have a five-year uh, comparison, mm -hmm. okay. I would guess that that ought to be available online someplace, but I think that asking the director to provide that is not unreasonable. Okay. So a five-year comparison of, of the Paris, Paris report. Okay. Yeah. And I understand COVID is in the middle of all that, but that's yep. okay. Did you have specific, because I did print off the ARIS report. I didn't know if you had any questions for Molly that she can either answer or she could write down and ask me. I have the... The itty bitty version? I did, well, I did, <laughs> I did four copies to it, but I just didn't want to waste the paper. <laughs> yeah. I take a look at all the different positions that mm -hmm. library certified position for the library. And I take a look at the number of vacancies we have. Those are big issues. Right. And I was trying to take a look at uh, what we're willing to pay people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the comparison to that might be helpful, not only for Auburn, but for five or 10 other communities similar to our own to see what people are paying. Because we've been told that we can't, there's nobody to hire. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting to me is that I, I've been watching the MBLC stuff and I see positions listed and I see them hired for. So obviously somebody's hiring people somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, it would be interesting to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Do I have a move? Just, um, oh, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just have one question for Molly. Oh, yeah. Back to uh, putting the collections policy up and, and, and the um, form here is there um, is there like a I can't remember uh, a what's new kind of box on the uh, on the website that we can sort of like say check out the new collections policy something like that so it doesn't draw attention because I can see it get, getting put on but yes. then nobody going to look at it, you know so. sure yeah, I'll, I'll take that down to, to okay. uh, pass along to Jean great thanks and I will have that without the strike from the <laughs> Excellent. All good points. Does anybody want to add anything else before we adjourn? No? Erica, you awake over there. <laughs> Your eyes are sparkling. I'm like, it's time for coffee. I'm teasing. I know it's too late for you. <laughs> it's time for coffee, although if I drink coffee now, I'm in trouble. Yes. Yeah, also <laughs> so may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And that is at 7. Do we have 7.28? I think we need a second. Anyway, I know that, but I thought it was 728, a motion to uh, adjourn. Second motion? Second. Um, I was going to say, if no one's it's one of those. Yes, we're here. <laughs> this, this is us now. So 728, right. we're adjourned. I'll have to let Thank my kids everyone. know.